pieces that uh, got broke. Uh, today I want to talk about a uh, knife I've worked on, finished up. I had a few people see it, wanted me to do a video specifically about uh, this machete. I refer to it as my hand and a half. So let's get into it and I'll tell you about what it is. First, let's talk about the sheath, uh, which I made. This is pine. I did that because of the weight. Stain. Paracord, paracord, paracord. Um, some strap material I picked up at uh, the store. This strap material I picked up at an estate sale. I try to get as much as I can from garage sales and estate sales. Um, a lot of my knife sheets are just single wrapped up here. This has got the uh, two other ones because this strap comes down to this piece right here. Because of the length of this blade, I added this little loop, not loop, uh, piece of material so that a leg strap can be put in. Uh, this is a leather belt material that I'm going to cut down and do a two ring uh, strap. Uh, I may offer it with this, I don't know, a lot of people like to use different material, do clips or stuff on them, uh, but I'm going to do a uh, leg strap. Uh, what they call a, a two ring strap. Uh, I also have a two ring belt that I made that I carry these on. But that's just, you don't have to use it, but if you like it strapped to your leg. I like it because I can sit down with it, I can maneuver with it, and it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't flop around. Now, let's look at the blade. It's a sax style blade. I really like that design. I find them really useful. Um, the reason these sheaths are like they are that's for someone who carries their uh, machetes on the right side. Now it's left-handed. You don't need a separate sheath for left or right. I sometimes carry mine on the right, sometimes I carry it on the left. Mostly on the left, but occasionally on the right. It gives me the option to flip it around. And I'll give you a brief overview about how I do these. Um, single knot or a uh, double loop through knot. Um, I use that most of the time up here. Oh, sorry. This top or top cord here goes underneath and then I glue it along the strap. I glue the strap on first the way I want it and then I will lay the cord, glue it, comes through here and then you start wrapping it around to secure it and then right here I put in a piece of string, laid it down and then finish wrapping it up to here. When this cord comes through I loop it through the string and pull it all down through here and melt the ends. That's just a light overview. There's videos out there and I might do a video about how I exactly how I do that if people are interested in it. That's the sheath. Now this is a heavy blade. And I hear people talk, I want a lighter blade, I want a lighter blade, and I know this isn't politically correct, but man up, people. These are working blades. Um, they're tough. They're made to be used. They're made to be beat against wood and cut wood. That's what they're there for. To do that, you need a heavier blade. All right, there's the machete. Leaf springs from a small car, 
really like this material. Really tough. Old candle. Aluminum pins. The pins I use are what I have on hand. Um, the whole deal with afterfall knives is that uh, these are made from scrap. They're made, it's kind of like in the video games, post-apocalyptic, uh, end of civilization. Um, that's what these are, using what materials you have on hand. I have some knives that are made with bed frames. I really like bed frame material. Uh, lawnmower blades, most of them make really good knives. I'm going to start doing some experimenting with some files. And um, for you people who collect files, I don't use the old expensive ones just because they're collector's items now. But this blade, I've really never measured this blade. Sixteen and a half inches. Twenty-three inches overall. So it's a it's a pretty big, pretty robust blade, and it's hand and a half. I made it this way because you can hold it like this, give you a little bit extra swing, but the main advantage is. Oh, let me get it in there. Double hand it. And as you can see, uh, depending on your hand size, that's where that pommel will fit. Mine's about right here. Maybe down a little bit. But it gives you good grip. Get a better view of that. Well, how that's going to go. But it gives you good grip. Two handed. A lot of power for a power stroke. Another good thing about this blade is it can be used as a uh, draw knife. Take bark, shape some wood. Uh, I'm actually going to try to make one of those. It's a pretty thick blade and the profile on this blade is closer to being a hatchet or an axe because you can split wood with this, you can baton with this. Um, when you hit the branch or whatever, it's 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 going to move wood. Um, will it strike as deep as a uh, thinner blade? No, um, but it won't suffer from the uh, drawbacks of having a thin blade. If you hit a knot or something, you might chip or turn that, roll that uh, blade over, that edge over. Um, this. I have beat hardwood with it and it just shrugs it off. Uh, it doesn't bother it at all. And it holds, it's been holding an edge uh, very well. I do the heat treatment on them. Uh, some of them I leave after I quench them because I want the hardness of them. It does make them a little bit more brittle and when I get to those knives I'll explain that. But um, you get a lot of good responses from this blade. This design, the Saks design, I really like because the one thing with machetes that I've always not liked, always had a problem with, with was with, with, they're not thrusting blades. With this, you can stab with it and people are going to say why do you need to stab with a machete uh, when I was in Oklahoma teenager fishing on pond with in ponds and stuff we would have to cross property with cattle horses there was coyotes out there pigs um, it was important to have something that you could defend yourself with uh, because there's animals out there that don't want you out there. Rabied animals. And having something long and pointy on the end is very important. And that gives me this ability without having to make a makeshift spear. But there it is. 
I really like this design. I really like the way it looks. Let me put it back in the sheath. sheath as you can see from these uh, a lot of my art is kind of in the steampunk genre these knives kind of fit in there too I had a uh, customer she said that was one of the reasons she liked them so much uh, because it would fit into that genre and she ended up buying a shorter version of this machete single-handed and a shorter knife which the knife I will be doing a video on probably next but there it is there's the blade the whole knife excellent knife robust gets the job done um, this handle is fit for my hand or people who hands are about like mine I do have the ability to change the handle design um, to fit individual needs and I'm going to do some with curved handles, maybe curved blades, I don't, haven't decided exactly yet. But there's the uh, hand and a half machete. Um, this is one of my blades I do have for sale. Uh, I'm working on a, uh, getting them up on a web page but if anybody's interested just drop me a line and uh, I'll get in touch with you. Uh, but this is so far the longest blade that I've made. Another thing I like about this blade, I just remembered, when I quench this, like I plunged it into the end of this, and then started raising it out to here. So this is quick plunge, and then I just started lifting it out. Until I got it to right about here, and then I let it cool down to the point where I wanted to let it cool down, and pulled the whole blade out. And what that means is this is not as hard as this. This is not as hard as this. It gradually gets harder as it gets to here. The reason I did that because it's a hand and a half, and because it's going to be power swung. When I hit wood with this. There's nothing in this handle. There's no vibration, which means your hand's not going to get fatigued. Um, it's my son described it as almost like hitting nothing. The blade just stops. You don't feel it into the handle. So when you're chopping with this, you're not going to get a fatigued hand. You're not going to get cramps unless you use it all day. But it's going to reduce the stress on the hand, on the wrist, even the elbow. And uh, that's one of the reasons I quenched it that way. To get softer metal up here to help absorb that shock. And I have not had any problems with breakage or anything else. I mean, this, this blade's been holding up real well. But um, this is my latest design. And the, uh, I'm going to do other videos on the other knives. But, uh, like I said, if you're interested, let me know. Uh, like and subscribe if you like my content and want more. Uh, make a comment if you have any suggestions for videos. But, oh, excuse me, I really like this blade. I like that sax design, and I'm going to be doing more of them. All right, this is an update to the uh, video you just watched. I added some stuff to the uh, sheath uh, for that uh, hand and a half machete. And before I did this, people who seen it said it was a uh, badass machete. Now it is. This is a uh, machete. This is the one you take out when you're uh, telling people I mean business and uh, try to keep up. Uh, this is a leather belt, two ring belt, this is a two ring strap for the leg. Um, with this belt you can put a, not, uh, another knife on it, another other equipment, put it on over your uh, belt that's holding up your pants, 
and that allows you to remove it or put it back on whenever you need to. Um, I plan on carrying the machete with it and maybe another uh, tool and the knife will be on my regular belt because I want it with me all the time. The leg strap when, when it's in use, it keeps it up out of the way, it's easier to get around, and you can sit down with this leg strap on it. Keeps the uh, sheets from hitting chairs, logs. Um, this makes it a lot easier to move around in uh, and uh, not have that thing just dangling there on your side. Uh, these I made pretty quickly, they're pretty crude, they're just prototypes. This, I did in about 10 minutes, it's, they're real easy to make. I get these, uh, the rings from uh, um, Hobby Lobby, I get these from Hobby Lobby and they are screw-ins and I lock tight them. But um, as you can see, let me prop that up, oh and the blade can still be taken in and out uh, when it's in this configuration. But this just allows you to... Uh, Oh, uh, carry it without having to put it onto your uh, regular belt. This uh, straps it to your leg makes it easier to get around on. But those are the updates I made. Um, I think it's a big improvement. I like the way it looks, like the way it handles. But I'm going to start uh, making these and these because um, I think they're a really good add-on these sheaths but anyway that's the update that's what it looks like uh, and um, leave a comment tell me what you think thanks for watching the video